Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. A fresh batch of sparring partners is in camp with Deontay Wilder helping prepare the WBC champion for his upcoming fight with Tyson Fury in December. So I'll cover that, but also how Fury sparring is getting on too. Also in this video, I'll get to Joe Joyce and the things he's saying about the work he's giving Fury. And also that another sparring partner is set to join Fury's camp in Big Bear, California from the UK. Buckle in. Let's go. So we know from statements from heavyweight Michael Polite Coffey, who's been in Deontay Wilder's camp, that Deontay Wilder is using multiple sparring partners in stages during the camp. Polite Coffey, a 4-0 prospect, was part of that first wave and has now left the camp. The new guys that have come in include Ivan Deitchko, Junior Farr, and Malik Scott, with all three having posted something about being in Tuscaloosa, in Alabama, in the camp. He's young, he's black, he's rich, and can't possibly be beat. Bob Squad! Be based in Alabama for the next month. Helping Deontay Wilder prepare for his fight in, um, in the Staples Center against Tyson Fury. So that one with the witch, that was from Deitchko's social media. Lenroy Thomas, who has also been in previous Deontay Wilder camps before, he may also be in camp currently, with Malik Scott having tagged him in a post. But it's hard to say, is this a new photo or not? But if Thomas was in camp, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. But in terms of the known fighters in camp, Wilder has selected guys who are big, and they can move. So starting with Deitchko, he is a massive six foot nine, a legit six foot nine. Uh, he's currently 7-0, training out of Florida. He's medaled in the last two Olympic Games, getting bronze at both London and Rio. Deitchko beat fellow hyped prospect F.A. Jagba at Rio en route to the medal round. Having Deitchko in camp, it allows Wilder to genuinely get a feel for what being on the end of a longer reach from a slightly taller guy with some skill will be like. I mean, sure, Deitchko can't do some of the things that Fury can do, but there's very few, if any, heavyweights can, that can mimic Tyson Fury exactly. But Deitchko, he will be a valuable addition to the wild camp. New Zealand prospect Junior Farr, he's currently 15-0. He's a 6'5 guy, and for a guy his size, he can really move well when he wants to. Far he may be able to mimic some of the things that Fury may look to do from the outside. And Far himself, he'll be fighting in December in New Zealand. So this also doubles um, as a camp for the Lou DiBella promoted fighter. Malik Scott, he's also in camp. These days, the 6'6 six six American, he's essentially a sparring partner for hire. Having only fought twice since 2015 and not since his 2016 loss to Luis Ortiz but he's been in plenty of camps since then. And while many question Scott's desire in the ring, there is no doubting he's a very good mover, one of the best in the business, and he's very good technically. And with Wilder preparing for a big guy who moves very well and who's got very good technical ability, Malik Scott is going to be a very good addition to the camp. He will certainly be able to mimic some of what Fury can do. He will be able to show Wilder some angles that he could well expect on fight night. And while I don't know who else is in camp, or will be in camp, the likes of Farr, Deitchko and Scott, they all bring something that Wilder can benefit from, and I'm sure he's getting some good work from them. Tyson Fury, meanwhile, he's also getting some good work in Big Bear, California. As I've reported previously, he's working with Guido Vianello and Joe Joyce. And Joyce has taken to social media with this post, saying, I'm getting the best possible work right now. I feel better than ever sparring Tyson, making me a better fighter as he is the most talented I've been in the ring with, which brings the best out of me. 
you would pay good money to see these spars. And Joyce himself, he will also be on the undercard of the Fury and Wilder fight, with his opponent yet to be confirmed. Although Gerald Washington has been offered that fight, and on behind the gloves, Joyce said that they were still waiting on confirmation from Washington. Also on behind the gloves, Joyce elaborated a bit on his sparring with Fury, saying he's quite mobile and agile, so it's quite hard to land a shot, but it's really good sparring training together it's a really good learning curve i think it's a great move him coming up here being at altitude training with us lot it's going to be beneficial for both of us and joyce predicted that we will see an awkward fight with it coming down to whether wilder can get a shot off or a fury can outbox him and i guess that kind of sums up what a majority of us have been thinking about that fight but i'd note going back to this photo of joyce and fury there has been some suggestion online that the reddening of Fury's forehead must mean that he's been getting bashed up and sparring. I mean, for me, it's hard to say either way. And Joyce, he really isn't giving much away in what he's saying publicly. But it does sound like both are getting good work from each other. And one guy who was set to join the camp is Lawrence O'Colley, who's six foot five, a rangy cruiserweight who's got good power. And a collie, he's been cleaning up the domestic scene in the United Kingdom. But it must be said, some of his most recent fights have been terrible to watch. You know, excessive holding, haven't been good viewing at all. But that's certainly not what Fury will want to bring him over for. But in respect of the opportunity to spar Fury, help him prepare for Wilder on December 1st, a collie told Sky Sports, It's just going to be interesting to be there with someone so much bigger than myself. He's got a long reach, good boxing IQ, so it's going to be a great opportunity to learn some stuff and just, just work. It's an ambition of mine to move up to heavyweight, but I still feel like I've got a lot of fundamentals that need to be ironed out at cruiserweight. I'm able to get away with a lot of stuff as a cruiserweight that I won't be able to get away with as a heavyweight, so we're just going to work on it. And Akali, he does have decent fundamentals, good power, uh, he moves well, and he may well be able to mimic some of the things that Deontay Wilder does in the ring. So if he comes over, he will be a good addition to the Tyson Fury camp. And a little sidebar just to end things here for the video. You may recall in early October, news emerged that Tyson Fury still hadn't signed up for VADA testing for this championship fight with Wilder, despite it having been a condition of being in the WBC rankings. And since then, Fury has lodged his paperwork and the testing protocol is underway. And the WBC has posted these images on its social media. So the accompanying text, it says, The WBC is proud with the compliance of both Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury with a clean boxing program slash VADA testing for their upcoming fight of December 1st. Enrollment testing began in October 8th. So I'll wrap it up there, but what do you make of the respective sparring of both Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, the guys that they do have in their respective camps? Do they have the right mix of guys in camp, or is there someone else that you think could have added value here? Let me know. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. That's boxing underscore squared. I'm out. want even more boxing content come and join me on patreon every week on a sunday i drop a new video on something topical or thought-provoking from the heavyweight division ranging from rankings the business of boxing the false economy of deluded fanboys the twists and turns in the division to assessments of fighters and their statements i hope to see you there and for more information go to patreon.com forward slash boxing squared the address is on screen now.